Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Pods Moving and Storage Studio. This is the Ramsey Show, where we talk about your life, specifically your money, your work, your relationships. It is a free phone call to jump in. 888-825-5225. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by George Camel. And as I said, this is where we unpack your big questions, the small questions, the medium-sized questions. There's no bad question here because this entire focus of this show uh, is about you getting breakthrough in the form of hope through practical steps forward, whether that be, again, in your uh, debt and financial life, or I'm here today to tell, help you through some work issues. Maybe you're dealing with a toxic leader or toxic environment, or you've got some opportunities you're not sure, should I take it? Can I actually change jobs and change careers in the baby steps? The answer is yes. And uh, so George and I are here for you. George, you doing well today? You look, I'm doing you look so particularly great. Uh, fall theme today. I like it. Peak fall aesthetic, just for you, Ken. I, you look like you could blend right into the uh, lovely warm brown tones of the studio. Wow. Uh, I noticed earlier today that the audience can't see it, but your boots match your shirt and your glasses. And they say men don't notice. So I, I well, I tell you, you just look like fall. <laughs> Thank you, and, Ken. Uh, we're glad that falls here. By the way, I want to just mention this very quickly. We'll get to your sh- uh, phone call shortly. Uh, we are headed to Dallas, Texas. I, I looked up at the calendar a few this days morning, away. and uh, we will head out on Friday. The whole crew. Uh, The entire Ramsey personality crew, we're going to be coming to Dallas for a smart conference. I'm sure I'll be talking about that later in the program, but I got very excited about that. And uh, that's going to be a one of a kind day. Uh, We're very, very excited. All of us there are speaking and I'm excited for your talk Ken. which a very different talk for you, but very inspiring nonetheless. Well, I'm going to be addressing the issue of waiting on your world to change. You know, and you think about uh, people's financial issues, you know, Um, I think very succinctly of the person who is just sitting there right now in baby step one going, I don't even know how I'm going to get to a thousand dollars or they're in baby step two and they're going, okay, I believe this works. Uh, I want it to work, but it feels like it's going to take me forever. And five, seven, eight years is what it looks like. It feels like, and they're exhausted. They're exhausted emotionally. They're exhausted physically. Some exhausted spiritually. You know, I think of people in marriages that are fighting for everything they got. We took a call the other day when we were on together. Mm. And I said to the I said to the man, I said, I'd fight with everything you got. I've got friends that have gone through divorce, and that's what they've told me. They wish they would have fought with everything they have for that marriage. What's that old quote? When you're at the end of the rope, tie a knot tie and hang on? Tie a knot and hang on. That's Love from that. uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. FDR quote. All FDR. And so we're going to be talking about that at Smart Conference. You know, you're waiting on a kid, a prodigal son to come home, you know. Um, and so what does it take to wait? How do you summon the willpower to wait? So that's just one that's thing we're we'll talking about. You're going to be talking about? I'm talking about how to find that margin because so many calls we take, people are going, I don't have enough money at the end of the month to cover my bills, to do the baby steps. And no. so I'm going to show them very tactically how to do that. And – do a live every dollar budgeting demo, which I know sounds as thrilling uh, as can be. You might want to wear a Steve Jobs kind of outfit, a little turtleneck. To, yeah, to do a product demo on I'm the six thousand people. You doing a little in an arena? It's a risky move. It is. Ken. It is. Uh, well, George and I are always glad to be. By the way, I don't read the comments, but George does. He has deep neurotic problems, and and uh, he you. reads the comments on YouTube and all other places. But apparently, some people like our uh, our combo, so we're going to try to serve you well. One listener said, "Root beer float." We are like a root beer float. Great ingredients on their own, yeah. little vanilla ice cream and root beer, but when put together, yeah. just so, pure magic. And that's ruined me because now that I know that, I feel the pressure to be as good as a root beer float. Every I don't day know you that wake up, possible. you got to go, can I be a root beer float And today? I'm afraid we've already failed. But let's get to the phones. We're going to go, wow, globally. Am I reading that right? We're going to Finland where Atesh is joining us. Atesh, how can we help? Hey, guys. Hey, thanks for calling my, like, taking my call. Like, it's, it's crazy. I'm a little bit excited, but... I really appreciate what time it. is it there, Atesh? The uh, what time is it? It's uh, 9 p.m., like just over 9 p.m. Wow, yeah, 9 there you 10. go. Caught you right before bedtime. Well, Thanks for yeah, calling I must in. tell you, this is the yeah. first time I've ever <laughs> talked to uh, anybody in Finland, so I'm equally excited. What's your question? Well, um, hey, okay, uh, so I'm planning to get into a mortgage. Um, <clears throat> so basically, um, I, I try to stick to your plan, and I try to find like a mortgage deal that would fit to like uh, take 25% of my income. You know, I think that's what you guys suggesting. Um, 
So, but I think, I feel like I can go a little bit more than that. And because in Finland, we don't necessarily need to put any, say, money into um, 401k or college funds for kids, you know. Things are pretty stable in terms of here. Like, I pay like 25% tax based on my income. <laughs> Taxes are pretty high. Yeah. Uh, would you still suggest me to go up to like 30%, 35%? Like, I have like a car loan and no other debts. Well, Atesh, I'll tell you this. Before you become a homeowner, becoming completely debt-free is going to free you up in a big way. And so I would not jump into this mortgage until that car loan is paid off. I see. So I have like 7,000 euros left in my car loan. And that's like, that's going to take three and a half years. And I have like 9,000 euros in savings right now. Well, okay, hold on. You got the money. Why not just pay it off today? Well, I can pay it off, but then for the down, like mortgage down payment, I can actually like... Well, that means to... that you're just actually starting yeah. from, you know, ground zero here. <laughs> this is a financial foundation. Right now on paper, it looks like you have money, but you don't because you owe that car lender. And if you don't believe me, stop paying yes. the payments. See if they don't take the car away. Well, that's true, but like, I, I don't know, like... I How old like are you? I might be like kind of... 26. 26. Okay. So let's say it's going to take you a little while longer to save up the down payment. So what? Yeah, I, I would need like 5,000, like five, like 6,000 euros for a down payment. For it sounds like, like you're putting very little down. Like, What's this house going to cost? Like I'm thinking of something like 120,000 at, 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 at max. Okay. Because you know? the euro is about the same as the dollar right now. It is, but the amount of money we make here is completely different than the U.S. When I listen to the show, you know, like what do you make? I, I like I make like two thousand seven hundred cash in a month, you know. Okay. Which is okay in Finnish standards, you know. Yeah, but you it's need to really pay. Okay. But you, but that's, listen, that's you, making thirty-two thousand euros a year, right? Yeah, that's right. Which is essentially thirty-two thousand American. And here, I'd say you need more income if yeah. you're going to be a homeowner. Mm, okay, maybe. I mean, I see my friends doing this thing, you know. Well, are like, your I'm, friends broke? Not a lot. It sounds like they're broke then. Well, like, I don't know. Maybe. They may uh, not right. look like George it is, All right, so George is being very nice. Atesh, here's the deal. You need to pay the car off today. That's going to leave you 2,000 euros left over. Still need an emergency fund. You still need the emergency fund, but you need to walk this thing out because you're going to have less expenses once that car is paid off, which means you can save more and you need to relax. You're still a young man. Don't rush into the house until you can afford it. This is just math. I don't care if it's pesos, euros, whatever you want to call it. You don't get a pass on math. And so I want you to do things the wise way. You're 26. You get the rest of your life ahead of you. Just be patient. Slow down. And if your friends are doing dumb things, doesn't mean you should do them. It means find better friends. Yeah, I like that advice, George. There you go. Hey, don't move. We're just getting warmed up. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're looking for ways to update your home without blowing the budget, I've got it. For years, I've been telling you about our friends at Blinds.com. Blinds.com makes it simple to shop top quality blinds, shades, and interior shutters from home with easy online ordering and free shipping. With Blinds.com, there's no need to renovate your entire home. Just change out what's on your windows with upscale choices like faux wood blinds, cellular, and roller shades or even outdoor shades. Plus, Blinds.com guarantees the perfect fit, whether you do it yourself or you have them measure and install everything for you. Shop their latest looks and see how much you can save at Blinds.com today. The easy and affordable way to make your home more beautiful is Blinds.com. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. So excited you joined us, America. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by George Kimmel. 
And we always enjoy being together because we love to help people. That's you. The phone number to jump in is 888 5225. That's 888 825 Two, two, five. We'll talk about your money questions, and I'm in today. I host the Ken Coleman Show as part of the Ramsey Network, specifically helping people win in their work. You spend more time at work than you do anything else in your life, and I think you should make plenty of money, but I also think you should experience tremendous meaning, and um, I'm also about helping you make more income. So if you've been with us for a while, we, were, we kind of referred to your income as a shovel. So the more income, the bigger the shovel, getting out of debt, getting through the baby steps. So I'm here to help out on that particular area of focus as well. So give us a call. I'm willing to help. And George is always in control, looking very Able and festive willing. today in his fall getup. A tumnal, if uh, you will. A, a, a tumnal. Right. I see what you did there. Autumn, and then you changed it up. So uh, for those of you who like to watch us on YouTube, you can see George is looking uh, particularly. That's the reason they're tuning in, Ken. I, well, it might be. Uh, if you want to see a little man in very nice fall attire uh, with a finely trimmed beard. It's a perk no one asks. See, for. now they got to see what you look like. If they never see what you look like, now they want to know. All these guys listening on our radio are like, I got to watch YouTube. Uh, they do. It. Yeah, so it's on demand. Check out the Ramsey Show. All right, Grant is going to join us now in Atlanta, Georgia. Grant, how can we help? Hey, so I bought a truck back in December and I financed it, and the engine blew up last month. And oh, I decided if I. If oh. I want to get rid of it or if I need to fix it. Well, tell us more about the truck. I, I'm, I'm su- assuming it was a used truck. It was a used truck. Um, it had not too many miles on it, but um, there was an issue with the engine, and now it's sitting in my driveway dead. Did you throw a rod? Um, close. Uh, the main bearings on the crankshaft spun. Ooh. Ooh, have you talked to anybody about what that would cost to fix? Is that a total, uh, like, pulling the engine out? Can it be repaired? Is it a whole new engine? Um, from the people that I've talked to, it's it sounded like it's a whole new engine because it's actually damaged the block. That's what I was worried mm. about. Now, George, I know you don't know anything that we just – you Listen, have no idea what we just said. Beyond clutch pack piston, I'm useless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. George, the only thing George knows about a car is there's a catalytic converter. He doesn't even know what that does. I always ask if there's a Hemi. <laughs> right. That's it. So, uh, but I do know this, Grant. Yeah. I know math. And so that's something we can dive into to see if this is worth so what's the en- Yeah, so what's the engine going to cost? A new engine. So, so just doing a little bit of research, a new engine is about $8,000. Okay. What would you pay for the truck? Uh, I paid, well, I financed, um, 36,000. Ooh. Well, so what is this thing worth in the condition it's in? You think, uh, on a good day, maybe 20 with the engine as is. I I think so. I, I'm not, you see, that's, that's where I'm kind of in the middle of like, I don't know if it's going to. Well, George and I oh, aren't, we're not perfect. experts on that. So you're going to have to do multiple cross referencing on that and get an idea of what that truck is worth with an engine that needs the to be The key repaired, is so. if you if you put the new engine in it, would it would you recoup the cost on that? I'm not sure cuz I think with labor and all, I think it's probably going to be about $12,000 to repair it. Easy. Easy. Which would bring its value to what do you think? Back to where it was? Uh Realistically, if I was try try and sell it privately, I could probably get maybe thirty two, thirty three out of it. Mm. Okay, so you'd still be underwater mm. on top of paying for the repair. Yeah, man, that stinks. Where'd you buy it from? I uh, bought it from one of my local uh, GMC dealerships. Okay, and is it out of warranty on the engine? Well, so they uh, they offered a extended warranty for six thousand dollars, so I declined that. Because I didn't want to have, I didn't want to be upside down, you know, forty two thousand dollars. But is there a manufacturer um, warranty on the engine beyond the dealerships? Possibly, uh, possibly. Um, I haven't fully looked into that. I've more been just kind of figuring out what engines are going to cost. Mm. I would double check that. I don't have high hopes for that, but certainly worth yeah. looking. It's certainly worth the amount of time spent. Yeah. How old is the truck? Uh, it's a two thousand sixteen, so it's only six years old. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you might you might have some luck there because some of these uh, warranties from the actual manufacturer uh, will cover. I'd call some the of dealer. The they're they're going to tell you pretty quickly. 
I'd call the dealer and yeah. say, "Hey, here's what happened. Is there a, is there a manufacturer? Do I have any ho- hope at all uh, with help from the manufacturer?" We're They're just saying, do you. all the research and homework you can before you sink any money into this thing. Yeah, and that's that's the good news is that I haven't. I pretty much got it to back to my house, and it's sitting. Not and the other unfortunate thing is, is I'm still pay, making payments on it while it just sits. Of course. Do you have the cash to to pay for the repairs if it's about twelve grand? Um, I, I had, don't have the full amount for it, but my dad said he'd help me out a little bit. So we might be able to, uh, fork out, um, what are you doing for, what are you doing for the other vehicle? How are you getting around? Um, I'm just borrowing one of my parents' vehicles. Okay. What's your income? Um, I believe it's about 44,000 a year. And you're driving a truck that was worth that. Yeah, it's oh, boy. not the not the Ramsey method. I don't think that's any method. That's just a recipe for disaster, man. And now we're sitting in this mess. And you know, I'm not here to beat you up, but just on the side of even if you fix this car, it's still way too much truck for you with your income. What do you do for a living? Yeah, um, I work at Hertz Rent a Car. Okay, what other skills do you have where you could pick up a part time job nights and weekends, making some pretty decent money? Even if you got to go stock shelves at Walmart for eighteen bucks an hour, what can you do? Um, well, I've been looking at getting a welding job. Nice. At you know manufacturing place. Do you have the current qualifications for that? I do. Okay, so that's why I asked if you can, if you're qualified, you don't have to spend any money on getting qualified. You can go make some much better money, whether it's side hustle, uh, part time job, that kind of stuff, where you have no outlay at all, no money outlay. You're just going to go make more money. George, I, I'm curious to know what your opinion is, but I, I'm going to go bust it and go get the 12000 exactly. fix the truck, and unload it. So I'm going to cash flow the repairs, unload the truck, and if I still got $4,000 difference, you can go borrow that from a, with a personal loan at your credit union. It's the only time we would ever say it's okay to go into debt is to clean up a mess like this on something you're underwater on. And so if you can get a small, if you can get a four thousand dollar loan instead of a thirty six, well now we're a lot closer to climbing out of the hole, and then we can aggressively attack that smaller one. So that's what I want you to do your homework yeah. on: is how can I get this repair done for as little money as possible? How can I sell it for as much money as possible? Private party is yeah. probably going to be your best bet. And then how do we get out of this mess of debt and find us a reasonable used car that we can pay for in cash? So those are the steps to take. Okay. It's a easier said than done. You've got some work ahead of you, but you can climb out of this, and it can be a lesson learned where we go, never again am yeah. I going to be in that kind of position. Yeah, and that's what I want you to hear, Grant. It's not, it, there's no way around this. This sucks. I mean, it sucks all the way around pretty badly. However, you can get out of this relatively unscathed. You really can. I mean, it's, it's, it stinks, but you can really do it. You know what I mean? You're going to have to bust it and hustle yeah. and work hard. But if you get into a welding job that pays you well, uh, you'll be able to do this. And then it's a lesson learned. And, and then, so it's not the end of the world is what I want you to hear. Yeah. And then for your next vehicle, I'll tell you our parameters around buying a used car in cash that's not going to sink you. Don't let everything that has motors in it be more than 50% of your income. So if you make 40, I don't want you to have more than 20 tied up in these depreciating assets, you know, things like boats and cars and all that. And so you might be looking at buying a $10,000 used truck. And maybe later on, as your income increases, we go, all right, it's time to upgrade to the $15,000 truck. And one day, I want you to have a real nice truck that you love. But right now, this truck has you, man. This thing owns you. And that's what happens when we put ourselves in these precarious situations. Yeah. But, you know, it's, it's doable, you know. Uh, We call it it a stupid tax. We've all been there. We've all made mistakes with zeros on the end. And it stings, man. But if you allow it to kind of, okay, I learned a valuable lesson here. Uh, It was, what, fun? Yeah. Well, when you're debt-free with an emergency fund and the car's paid for, you go, well, that stinks. I got to buy a new engine. That's exactly But then you yawn and move on with your life. Yeah. Man, that's tough stuff. Mm, Sorry. Thanks, Grant. You will get on the other side of this, man. Appreciate the call. All right, folks. Don't move. We got more of the Ramsey Show right around the corner.
We were drawn to Christian Healthcare Ministries because we both had young families and we wanted to have more children. And we had also just started a real estate company and needed to find healthcare coverage that would meet our needs. We were attracted to CHM because of its low monthly costs and the ability to negotiate medical costs down. Established in 1981 and accredited by the Better Business Bureau, CHM is here to meet the needs of your growing family or small business. Check us out at chministries.org backslash budget. We absolutely believe in it. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman, joined, uh, joined rather by George Campbell. See, I did the joined and George together. It you happens be to careful. the best of us, Ken. Jo- <laughs> joined by George Campbell. Uh, it does happen to the best of us. <laughs> it's a Monday. Excited that you all are with us. The uh, number to jump in on the call is 888-825-5225. But it's uh, one of our favorite parts of the show. When we look out into the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage, and we see people who are here to do a debt-free scream. It's Chris and Lauren. Hello. Hello. How you guys doing? We're doing great. Yeah. Doing good. Yeah. Good. Where are you guys in from? Oklahoma City. Oklahoma City. All right. And neither one of you are wearing cowboy boots, I want to point out. No, I'm from Montana. She's hardly Oklahoman, so. Oh, I like that. That's a, I've never <laughs> heard that. Hardly Oklahoman. I like that phrase. That you, that you could use the same thing for George and I. That's true. Uh, as well. So this is exciting. So let's get the numbers. How much debt have you paid off? A little over one hundred and twenty-four thousand wow. dollars in sixteen months. In sixteen months, and what was the range of income? Uh, we started about one hundred and twenty thousand dollars and got up to one hundred and sixty-five. Wow! 000. What do you guys do for a living? I'm an accountant, and I work technology for a school district. Oh, great! So, what uh, what happened with the uh, increase in pay? Some promotions or new gigs or what? A little bit was raises, but a lot was just hustling. Uh, a lot of uh, over, I think, around a thousand hours of DoorDash and Uber Eats. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, we uh, sold plasma. Um, pretty much any way you can make money, we did. We sold everything we owned. She thought mm-hmm. I was going to sell our dogs, and that kind of got her scared. That's incredible. <laughs> okay, so yeah. two things. What was the most lucrative side hustle you would encourage people to go out and do if they're trying to pay off some debt? Uh, overall, if you get really good at it, DoorDash and Uber Eats, you can make a lot of money doing that. If you're strategic. Give us an, if you're strategic. Give us an idea, because I think people want to know what that Hourly means. Hourly rate after expenses and fees and all that. Uh, but there's nights where we were making, you know, 40, 50 bucks an hour. Wow. So, yeah. We found the right locations, the right restaurants, uh, knew what offers to turn down, knew what like delivery places to not go to. So we were very selective with it. But once we got into it, we started making off, like we were happy to make 12 bucks an hour. And then it got to where near the end of it, I mean, there were days where I was making over $1,000 based on the weather. Is so, that right? Yeah. I think, by the way, this is uh, just a little quick side note, but I want your opinion. This is why a lot of restaurants are having a hard time hiring waiters and waitresses because they can do DoorDash instead. Absolutely, yeah. Wow. That's George. incredible. There you go. Just and a little then, economic note. Well, and he was saying you sold all this stuff. Where where are you selling it? Where was the most the best place to sell your stuff? Uh, marketplace was a really good one. Facebook? Um, Facebook mm-hmm. Marketplace. We got lucky because it was kind of when they first started doing shipping, so we got a lot of free shipping out of it. Um, the time we did have to pay for it, we just added it there. People will buy anything on Marketplace. It is <laughs> so, shocking. Yeah. Like, if you wow. think, who's going to buy that? Someone we had will some buy it. games that we weren't even sure if they worked or not. Put that on the description, and people were paying 20 bucks for them. So, yeah, our Nintendo amazing. 64 games. <laughs> <Yeah>. Oh, wow. <laughs> Good for you guys. You nice. said nothing is going to stop us from paying off 124 grand in 16 months. So what kind of debt was the 124? Uh, a lot of student loans, two car loans, uh, credit cards. Personal loan. Uh, pretty just normal, typical stuff. Wow. You were trying to collect them all. We, yeah, we were yeah. going for it, yeah. <laughs> so what happened 16 months ago and you said, all right, no more. We're about ready to get gazelle intense and pay this off. Well, we got engaged in 2020 and we went to premarital counseling. They gave us the total money makeover book. Shout out to Crossings Community Church, by the way. They gave us the, the oh, that's information. Awesome. Yeah. Nice. Which we didn't read it, but <laughs> my uh, my friend Cassidy, she was a big Dave Ramsey fan, and you know I always thought she was kind of weird for doing it, <laughs> but 
<laughs> but uh, we, it kind of planted a seed when we got the book. We, we uh, ended up revisiting it later on. Yeah, for me it was, uh, we were best friends who married best friends. They're here with us right now. Oh, that's So uh, I saw him reading a book, uh, The Total Money Makeover, during work, during breaks. And for me, that was weird because he was reading at all. Like, he doesn't read. You don't see that these <laughs> so, days. So, yeah, and it turns out that was, like, one of the almost stipulations of their engagement was, like, hey, if we're going to get married, you need to uh, read this book. We need to be on board with this, all that stuff. So I saw him doing that. And then it was during the pandemic, all this stuff. It was 2020 when we got married. Um, lots of things were getting canceled. Lots of things were getting pushed back on people. We decided we're just going to move our wedding forward. Like, we're not going to wait for all this stuff to get canceled. We don't know what it's going to look like in five months. So let's just get it over with. Uh, that sounds terrible. <laughs> but, yeah, let's just do it. Uh, we decided to do it in our backyard. And because of that, we saved a lot of money in the long run, but we spent a lot of money in the short run to make it happen. Uh, our motto basically became ch ch charge it We were just putting it on credit cards. Wow. So by the end of it, after we had uh, come back from our honeymoon, uh, we sat down to look at it, and we had spent well over five grand just like in that last month. And with all the payments we already had from student loans and cars, I just, we weren't sure, like, how much money are we going to have left after we make all these payments, so. I mean, 124000 in 16 months. Yeah. What were you selling? Cars? <laughs> well, I, uh, I work in technology, so I was able to buy some broken devices, resell those online. Um, That's a good side hustle. Yeah, it was a really great side hustle. Do you hustle. happen to have any idea how much money you generated from selling things to, to go into the 124000 I think it was about 6000 from broken devices that yeah. Chris sold, and then maybe 1000 from stuff around the house. Yeah, Plasma was about another $2,000. Uh, DoorDash was like twenty to thirty k almost. Wow. From so new deliveries. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. So you That's guys just didn't sleep. Not really. I mean, there were weeks. There was a week where she went to London, and uh, I just decided, hey, I'm home alone. I got nothing to do. So I was putting in, like, you know, 18, 19 hour days just going to work and then coming home and doing DoorDash mm -hmm. wow. and things like that. Yeah. So, so obviously, we're hearing a story of extreme gazelle intensity, oh, yeah. and you guys did it. That's a lot of we, money. Uh, instead of beans and rice, we just did beans, couldn't afford the rice. Yeah, so, <laughs> the rice. Yeah. So, besides the intensity, what would you all say is the key to getting through this journey? We were a little bit different on this, but for me, it was making goals within the goal. And so breaking out, you know, $124,000, that's a big number to look yeah. at. So it was creating smaller goals and then pushing to reach those. And then once we accomplished that smaller goal, it was celebrating that little win. And then that kind of kept us going for the next one. Yeah, yeah, that was really good for us here, breaking it down. Um, we didn't do any big celebration. It'd be like, hey, we just paid off our last credit card. Let's go to Kidoba. Like, let's really splurge on that. Right. And uh, it got to a point where our goal was three years. We looked at our income. We're like, here's how much we make. Here's how fast we can pay it off. And then five months into it, we realized we'd already paid off over $50,000. And wow. we're like, this is a time. We're going to go a little bit bigger on this celebration. Then we're getting right back into it. Uh, within that first year, we paid off $100,000. So we were over a year and a half ahead of schedule. That's amazing. That's the end of the first year. But and the I, big... Oh, sorry. I got to assume a lot of that was the cheerleaders. I mean, you have 17 oh people here to support you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They were asking us questions all the time. Uh, the Hedricks right there, they were kind of our like coaches almost. Like We'd listen to the podcast while we were doing deliveries, but at the same time, like if we had questions, we'd go to them. Uh, for me, though, I think the biggest one is um, when we first started doing this, we were looking at our expenses and we saw tithing in there. And we're like, that's our biggest expense. And it's like, you know, for a brief second there, it was like, if we don't do this, we can pay it off like a lot faster. And luckily she slapped me in the face and was like, no, we're paying our tithe. Like, not that's literally. Not, yeah. <laughs> she said, that's not optional. There's a yeah. spiritual so, slap in the face. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> we, uh, we paid our tithe and that's why we think things just really started getting rolling because we were faithful with it. Mm. And then um, a couple months into it, we started feeling guilty because we realized we weren't tithing on the extra income we were bringing in. It's like, you know, we don't have just our salaries anymore. We're bringing all this stuff in and that's God's money too. So we need to do something with that. Wow. So we made a back payment on our tithe, like to catch up to oh it. Oh my goodness. And all of a sudden she got a bonus that she'd never gotten in her life, like at her work. So bonus came in, paid for it. We're like, well, this is awesome. Like God's what taking care blessing. of us. You guys have an awesome story. I yeah. gotta tell you, I'm exhausted uh, in a good way. Just listening <laughs> yeah. to you guys uh, and how hard that was, but in a word, was it worth it?
it. Absolutely. There We're in Tennessee nice. with you guys right now. Well, so. yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got much more out of it than that deal. All right, you guys ready? We're about ready Absolutely. to do this. We want you to know we're going to give you a copy of uh, the Total Money Makeover to give to somebody else. And then Dave's latest book, Baby Step Millionaires and uh, FPU, for you guys to gift to somebody else if you'd like or take it or train somebody through. We're going to give you all that to show you our appreciation. All right, here we go. Chris and Lauren from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. They paid off 124000 in 16 months, making 120 to 165 thousand dollars. Take it away, you two. It's time to hear your debt-free scream. Three, two, two. one. We're, We're debt-free. Free. There it is. Woo. Very nice, George. I gotta tell you, I need to go give them a box of rice. My face hurts from smiling. It's time. They've earned some rice. They just did beans. That's the first time I've ever heard that. That's no rice. Sacrifice. Just beans. Well, that is what it is all about. They have forever changed their future. What an inspiring couple. Oh, that's why we do this show. Don't move. More Ramsey show coming right up. To the Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by George Campbell. We're here for you this hour. Thrilled to have you. The phone number is 888-825-5225. We're talking about your money, your work, your relationships. George and I combining today. He's the money expert, and I'm the work guy. I don't like saying work expert. I'll call you an expert. Work guy. I work like that. guy. I'm Working a man. I'm a work guy. Man of the people. Uh, thrilled, uh, as always, though, George, to be here on the show with you. So you can jump in. We'll take your questions. Uh, every time you hear someone do their debt-free scream, like we just had in our last segment, it's because at some point they say, I've had it. I'm not going to live this way anymore. And when you can get mad like that and do what they did, your life is going to change. Right now, inflation and your credit cards are killing you. But you've been led to believe that you're not in control of your money. Well, that's wrong. You have to decide to control what you can control, and that's you, your behavior. You have the power to change, and Financial Peace University is going to show you what to change. This course will teach you the proven step-by-step -step plan that's helped nearly 10 million people beat debt, master budgeting, and build wealth. And you can do it, too. Stop letting debt and money stress control your life. Say, I've had it. And take back your control. Start Financial Peace University at RamseySolutions.com slash FPU. That's RamseySolutions.com slash FPU. 888-825-5225 is the phone number. Let's go to Boston, Massachusetts. George's neck of the woods. Joe is on the line. Joe, how can we help? Hey guys, uh, thanks for taking the call. You bet. Um, so my wife and I bought a house, uh, and then we're going to knock it down and rebuild it. Um, and so we got some quotes from general contractors for the work, and as you can probably imagine, they were they were pretty high. Um, so we decided to kind of take on the job ourselves and GC it ourselves. Wow. Uh, but the uh, well, we didn't. We're, so this is all new learning for us, right? We're, we're we don't we're not contractors. We're not in the trade, so it's kind of a learning experience. One of the things we learned is that banks won't finance construction jobs unless you're using a, a GC. Um, and so we found kind of an untraditional loan through a private business, um, which you know is, is a little uh, unique. But now we're kind of you know do we. Do we go back and, and work with the GC and take out kind of more debt to build this, or should we continue down this path um, of financing, you know, this untraditional route and then kind of working through it on our own? I know it's kind of a unique question, but just wondering if you've seen this before. Well, not this in one in particular. Movies. This I, one, I this is scary horrifying. stuff. Did you finance the purchase <laughs> of the home as well? Uh, no, we paid in cash. Okay. But now we're financing the the work that needs to be done. How much are we yeah. talking? We, well, so we act, we sold our house prior to this, um, and we we cleared a lot of equity in it, so we we're able to buy the house, uh, you know, with cash, and we still have a couple hundred thousand in cash on hand for the build. So the 
we're thinking about, you know, somewhere in the like two to 300 grand financing range. So on top of the cash, you still need another 300 grand in financing? I mean, well, that's it's all new to us, George, right? So we're kind of like budgeting it out ourselves. Um, it's probably in that under, like, I mean, that would be the high end, all in kind of everything. But, well, I'm wondering, yeah, is it too late to back out of the financing or are you already in this thing? No, 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 we're not. Okay. We're not. We're, I'm wondering if yeah, we just so. move at the speed of cash because it's going to take a while to build this thing. So could you start with what you got for the next six months, nine months, and then start cash flowing the rest later on? Yeah, I guess that's something we haven't um, they hadn't considered. I mean, it was always uh, um, thinking the finance route, but yeah, I mean, I guess that that would be my plan it, because it takes yeah. a little bit of the risk and liability away too when you don't have to cover the loan on top of making sure that you're. I mean, this is a part time job you signed up for to just do all of this <laughs> yeah. subcontracting yourself versus having a general contractor who's basically the middleman handling this whole project for you. And so yeah. that's why it's more expensive is they're taking on the headache instead of you having yeah. to, you know, hassle all these guys, make sure they show up, make sure the work is being done correctly. And so that's kind of on you. And that's the scarier part. And there's less liabilities that way because the general contractor has their own insurance and you don't. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I, Joe, what kind of income do you and your wife make? Um, we do pretty well. I, I'm uh, north of 300 grand. Okay, so let me let me just re, let me just run through this really quick. So you make north of 300 grand. You've yep. got 200 grand cash in the bank, is that right? Yep. And you're thinking about building a $500,000 house roughly? Yeah. Yep, roughly. Okay. Yep. Um I mean, I'm not anti what George is saying because you guys have the income too to be able to cash flow this build. I mean, you guys could go rent a small apartment or whatever. I don't know if you got kids. I guess I shouldn't say a small apartment. I don't know what your family situation is. <laughs> but the point yeah, is, is the young ones. yeah. So I mean, you can you can cash flow this build. Is absolutely right with 200 grand down to get that started and get a quality GC. I just I appreciate your efforts to save money and seeing the sticker shock of a GC. But I'm going to tell you something. I my father in law is a is a general contractor custom home builder and i'm just mm -hmm. going to tell you it's it, there's one thing between getting ripped off and another thing to pay a premium for something that should be a premium product and your home is a premium product you know i told george right. one time don't buy cheap shoes buy nice leather shoes george <laughs> and he listened he listened to me all right you got to you got to put the money into the house and a good general contractor it's not worth a headache and the potential risk and all kinds of nightmarish, and I mean nightmarish possibilities. Yeah, unless you come from that world and you know it inside and out and you feel comfortable handling it, then I, I wouldn't personally become the general contractor in this scenario. Yeah. And with your income, it is worth the premium you're going to yeah. pay to have that headache off of your shoulders. Yeah. And this Joe. is the long-term play, right, Joe? This is the house. Like, you oh, bought yeah. this. So, I mean, dude, I'd be patient. So, <laughs> you've got 200 to put down. That's almost yep. 50%. You know, so, yep. you know, I, I, I'm i with George on his option or just go ahead and, and let's see what the financing looks like if we actually had a GC. And, and Dave yeah. would tell you, he built this building and this campus at the speed of cash. And if we didn't have the cash on hand, well, it's going to take longer to build. Yeah. And so part of it is just right. understanding it's going to be a process. It's going to take a lot of patience. We have to have a game plan for how this is going to be sustainable for the next year or two as we complete this yeah. build. But, man, you're going to get on the other side of it with no headaches and no payments. And I love that part of it. Yeah. Yeah, you're not kidding. Yeah, well, thank you, right. Joe. Yeah, Appreciate no, the call, yeah, man. Yeah, uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. No, no GC in for you, Joe. Right? Let's go get somebody that's a pro. You know, there's Absolutely. something to be said there. You start thinking about, you know, okay, and but boy, I've never even heard of the private loan from the business. Yeah, or, the non-traditional financing side. Yikes! That worried me. What What's in that fine print? Whew. I don't want to un uncover that. Do you cover that in the fine print podcast? Oh, that might be a future episode, Ken. You know, like the 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 the, the what would you even call that? You don't even call that non-traditional financing. That's I don't know. Just, he, he threw out a name. I didn't hear it uh, clearly, but. Yeah, that makes me really, really nervous. If a bank is like, this is too much risk for us, I go, Who, who's covering that? Who's yeah. willing to take on That's that kind of risk? That's a very good point. When a banker won't touch it, you should probably walk slowly away. And they got plenty of money. And they say, <laughs> well, no thanks, Tom Hanks. Yeah. And uh, 
there what are you 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 you, you turned into an 80 year old guy you can't say that you know, ever again i'm a curmudgeon ken no you're not we're just two old guys like no. the guys on sesame street up in the balcony that, that it could be us but you're not there yet now george here's why the contractor matters right you got to make sure that you talk to several contractors this is like you know we tell people look for our smart vester pros Shop men around. and women that we've already vetted yeah we still say go sit with them and interview them and make sure that you feel good about them. And I'm on a general contract. I just want to point this out. There is no reason to rush into building a home. It is just too, too important. Well, it's a wild time right now, too, just trying yeah. to find people who are willing to do the yeah. work. I talk to many people in my area, you know, that uh, new good general contractors, who's building homes. We want to do a custom build. Sounds like it's a custom build. You know, who do you work with? And uh, and you got to interview them, just like you would someone who's going to be an in-home nanny. Like, you, this is a high-trust relationship. Well, we you did don't want to rush. We did a build on our first town home. It was a new construction build through a builder. And it was a part-time to full-time job, just keeping track, going up. They, the, the towel bar is in the wrong spot. Why'd they mess that up? We got to yeah. fight them on this. And so, it's a lot of work when yeah. you step into something like that. You got to be ready. I feel like uh, Stacy said that once when I probably put up the towel bar. Eh, it's in the wrong eh. spot, Ken. I should never do any house. You're in the wrong line of business. Like yeah. Uh, I'll tell you what, folks. It's been a fun hour. That went Good fast. Times. Want to thank George Camel. Want to thank the crew behind the glass to keep us on the air. I want to thank you, America. You are the reason we do the show. This is the Ramsey Show. Hey folks, Ken Coleman here. Did you know The Ramsey Show is one of the most popular podcasts in the world? Get your daily dose of advice on life and money. Check out all of our shows from The Ramsey Network wherever you listen to podcasts. Headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Pods Moving and Storage Studios. This is the Ramsey Show, where we talk about your life, your money, your work, and your relationships. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by George Camel. We're here for you this hour. It's a free phone call if you want to jump in. 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. George is going to take care of the specific money questions. I'll chime in. And I'm here to answer any of your work questions uh, relating to, hey, do I take this promotion? Uh, do I change fields? Can I work a side hustle? Should I work a side hustle? Uh, any of those related issues as relates to your income, I'm here to help you make more income and more impact, and uh, we'll work together to help you. The phone number is 888 Ariel is in San Diego, California. Ariel, how can we help? Hi, thanks for having me. Um, so I know the math works in California, <laughs> but... I'm single. I make about 90000 a year between my full-time and my side hustle, and I'm just feeling like it's impossible to save enough to where I can afford a 25% of my income mortgage. Um, and I'm just wondering, at what point do you just give up on home ownership and just decide to rent? <laughs> wow. It got dark real quick, Ariel. You just yes. were like, eh, it's over. How old are you? <laughs> yeah. I'm 44. Okay. So you've got plenty of time, and you do live in a high cost of living area. You make ninety thousand. Where's all your money currently going? Do you have any debt? No, I'm on step three D. Okay. So how much do you have saved mm -hmm. currently? Um, I've got about thirteen thousand. All right, that's a great start. So what makes you think I'll never have a hundred? I'll never have a hundred fifty. Well. In order to afford that 25% that you guys recommend, I would need a $260,000 down payment. On so that what me, kind of house? That would be a one-bedroom condo. 400000 is the average for a one-bedroom condo here. Okay. And mm -hmm. do you can you live further out than that? Do you have to live in, in the proper San Diego proper? Um, I, I could go a little farther out. It would be about... 380 if I go like half hour out from where I'm at right now. Okay. Yeah. And so how quickly, if you're making 90, do you think your income will go up over the next decade? 
I think so, yeah. Okay. I'm How thinking, much? like, I don't want to work two jobs for a decade, you know? Sure. Right. So what could your professional yeah. uh, income look like? What, what would that look like if you really walked up the ladder that maybe you're on or you'd like to be on? What, what do you think you could make? Um, well, there's a potential for me to get a promotion within the next year, but it would only bump me up by 10000 Um so that would definitely help, though. Um, and then as far as moving up in my career, I'm, I'm trying to expand, like, what what to look at. And so I have started looking into being, like, a safety manager, but there's just a lot of schooling that goes into that. So then my savings would go to cash flowing these all these certifications I would need. So I don't know. I'm, I'm just right at the beginning of potentially looking for a different job because I really sure. love my job. Well, just ballpark, and I don't want to get us lost in this, but that will be the last question I'll ask on this, but what do you think those certifications would cost you, roughly, all of them? Um, ten to $15,000. Mm-hmm. And then that would give you the opportunity to make how much more in income? So my full-time job, I currently make seventy-two, and that job, the top end is ninety-three. Okay. All right. So, Ariel, here's how, more, here's how I look at it with renting. The cost of living is only going to continue to increase. And so rent is yeah. going to continue to go up over the next decade in San Diego. Would mm-hmm. you agree? Yeah. Yes. Definitely. And so while, while it may take longer for you to get into that condo or house, I also don't want you to give up and just go, well, I'm just going to rent until I retire and pass away. I don't want that to be the the MO either. And so I think we can find some in-between. And when it comes to our 25% parameter on that 15-year fixed, that is your income after taxes but before other deductions like your health care, your 401k. So is that how you've been calculating this? No, I was going according to what money hits my bank account. Okay. Well, that can be a a slightly – confusing number because of that. The parameters are really, because deductions can differ. And so if you're investing 15%, yeah. well, it's still a quarter of your, your income, but because of those deductions and because you live in a high tax state, you're not seeing a whole bunch of your paycheck, right? Correct. So if that number did change, you could probably get in that house a few years sooner, correct? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so if you do the math on that, go back to the mortgage calculator, it might mean you need to put 200 down on a $400,000 house. And if we can create enough margin to go, all right, I can put, you know, five, four grand away every month for 12 months. That's 48000 a year. And after four years, I've got what I need while I've been investing 15%. And if that means we have to go f- get more income, it's worth doing. Yeah. So what are you doing for work, you said? Um, I manage a public swimming pool. Okay. So I work for the city. So are there other management jobs Maybe in the private sector, that could pay you more than that. Absolutely. The answer is yes. Sorry, I jumped in, Ariel. Okay. He got excited. <laughs> well, yeah, because here's the deal. You are limited in, in, with a municipality or state government job. You just are. Mm-hmm. And the fact is you've got skills and experience that are very transferable. And, and, I, and again, I, I think what George said is absolutely the way to go. But I also think that your income potential is far bigger than you realize, and it works it makes a lot of sense for you to at least look around and go, all right, what could that look like? Because if I'm, and again, I'm not going to just, you know, pigeonhole you, but the 15,000 in in certs that you talked about being able to make you 30 or 40 more a year, well, that pays off pretty quickly. Uh, But I think it could be much higher than that. Um, And you know what I'm going to do, George? We got a brand new bundle. I'm going to give away to Ariel. How about that? I love this. So Ariel, here's what I want you to do. Uh, I want you to hang on the line, and we're going to give you the um, Increase Your Income Bundle. It's at RamseySolutions.com in the store, and it's got my book, From Paycheck to Purpose, which will give you the seven stages to finding and doing work that you love and you get paid well to do, the Get Clear Assessment, which will help you out with ideas, the Get Hired Digital Course, where I teach you how to do everything that's actually in the book, and then we have resume templates that are very, very popular that will help you stand out. So I'm going to bundle all that for you. It's called the Increase Your Income Bundle, George. Love that. And it's got all kinds of – you get the book, you get the digital tool. You got the assessment. You have the you templates the, the course, and the course. Yeah, where I what teach people how to get hired. Uh, a signed photo of you. The eight by ten. That's the eight by ten glossy of George Campbell's not included in the increase your income bundle. So hang on the line, uh, and we'll get you that. And that George really is the key. 
yeah. to the gap. Well, with a high cost of living area, especially. Making yeah. 70 yeah, you can't throw your Diego. hands in the air and go, I'll never do it. No, I'm going to go make more money. And now's a great time to do that. So I love it. Yeah, appreciate the call, Ariel. You'll get there. I love San Diego, George. You know why? Beautiful area. No bugs. Didn't think about that. That was not on my list of why I love San Diego. Well, I like to sit outside on a nice uh, summer evening in uh, in Tennessee. You're going to be swatting some mosquitoes. No, thanks. Or as they say in the Deep South, skeeters. Skeeters. There you go. Teaching something new every day to you, George. Hey, don't move. Much more valuable information than that. Coming up, this is The Ramsey Show. I say it all the time. If you're a business owner and you don't know your numbers, you don't know your business. And when markets are shifting, it's even more important. You've got to know where you stand so you make your next move the right move. And you don't have to be in the dark here. Over 31,000 businesses, including my team at Ramsey, know their numbers because they use NetSuite by Oracle, the number one cloud financial system. NetSuite gives you visibility and control of your financials, planning, budgeting, and inventory so you can manage risk, get reliable forecasts, and improve margins. Having everything in one place has saved my team hours each week since we made the switch to NetSuite. NetSuite is a game changer. So head on over to netsuite.com slash Ramsey to get a product tour today. That's netsuite.com slash Ramsey. The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman. He is George Camel. Thrilled that you have joined us today. The phone number is 888-825-5225. Find out for yourself why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. You get free samples, free shipping, and with the new promos they run every month, you'll save even more. All you got to do is use the promo code Ramsey to get the best deal. Today's question comes from William in New Mexico. Are there new rules for buying used versus new and lease versus financing in this post-COVID era? My family has been looking for a used car we can pay cash for, like we were taught in Financial Peace University, and we're finding used cars only a few thousand dollars less than new. We also learned the insurance companies are asking for additional bridge coverage since the used cars are not as valuable as they're being sold for. Ugh. Help, please. Ugh. There you go, George. Okay, so we'll, right down your lane. Well, there's a there's a lot going on here that uh, grinds my gears, Ken. Oh boy, not to have a car analogy. Well, I like what you did there, but this idea that well, used cars are only going for a few thousand dollars less than new. Yeah, if you're looking at thirty-eight thousand dollar used cars, thank you very much. Most people don't need to be driving that, uh, based on the average income. People need to be looking for $15,000 cars. And let me tell you, there's not 15,000 new cars But some people need to even be looking at five to $7,000 cars, yes. George, depending on their situation. And one of our favorite things to do I is go on love it, dude. onto the internet and what just What would you search. like? Give me something. While you're teaching, I'm going to pull up a sample. What, what are you okay, looking Okay. Well, you know, a car that we recommend here frequently is a Honda. So okay. let's look up a Honda Civic All right. All right. used Let's just see in the in, in Nashville area. Condition. All right. You keep on teaching. I'm going to so, do your homework here. So no, there are no new rules for buying used versus new and lease versus we our advice still stays the same stay away from debt at all costs and save up and pay cash for a reliable used car no we don't mean take a briefcase full of dollar bills to the dealership that's not going to work uh, but you can take a money order or a cashier's check uh, cashier's check and go and do that now a lot of dealerships make their money through financing the margin on cars can be as low as 6%. The margin on financing can be as high as 60%. And so when you walk in there and you tell them, hey, I'd like to pay cash, a lot of the times they're going to, sometimes they'll say, we're not going to sell it to you at that price because they don't make enough money on the deal. They'll wait for the next guy to walk in who's ready to finance. And so you've got to know exactly what you're walking into. And this means doing all of your research ahead of time. 
online, knowing the value of the car you're going to buy. And you can tell them, you can wait till the end and say, what's the out the door price? That's what you're looking for is the out the door price, because that includes all of the fees. And when you look at those fees, make sure you don't pay anything more than sales tax and a small dock fee. Anything else is highway robbery. They go, oh, that's a mandatory warrant. No, I'm not paying that. And watch what happens when you walk out the door. They'll be chasing you within three minutes because they see a guy with a check in hand ready to buy. All right. So what do you got for me, Ken? All right. Thank you, George. Uh, This is one of my favorite things to do. So, Ken, here's the the people objection is, Ken, there's no cars under $15,000. I got to go buy a $38,000 used car. And I would say that is not true. And I've got the results right here, George. I just did a quick search uh, using AutoTrader in the Franklin, Tennessee area. Okay. All right. And I'm going to give you some options here. Okay. First, we've got a used 2008 Honda Civic EX. Uh, 129,000 miles, which for a Honda is barely getting started. The car hasn't even woken up yet. The car's... uh, It's still a a teenager. teenager. Thank you very much. $7,999. Wow. Okay. Uh, By the way, it's a nice little blue paint job. It looks fine. All right, let's go up a little bit. All right. Uh, We've got a... Uh, what there, about in the, in the 10000 range, Ken? What can right. we get? There's no need to shout, George. Sorry, I'm getting excited. Uh, here we go. We have a used 2008 Honda Civic. It's an EXL. That's top of the line. It's an e- See, you know EXL. I owned one. You I, did. Yeah. 145,000 miles. Again, for a Honda, not a big deal. $9,999. So that's just below the, uh, the threshold. Is and it going to impress anyone? No. 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 Will it get you from A to B with very little repairs and maintenance costs? Yes. No. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So again, that's just one example. Uh, yeah. I get very excited about this because I'm in the market right now for a teenager, and uh, I'm looking at this stuff all the time. By the way, I should point out, Facebook Marketplace, great place to find good deals. And you can negotiate over there. Yeah, it's not a deal. Now you're dealing with a private seller, and uh, if you show up with cash. Dave Ramsey taught me that many years ago. I mean, literally, show up and go. This is what I'm paying yes, right now. If it's and private, and you count party. it out. Lay it on the hood of the car. And do it somewhere public, by the way, if you're going to do that. Yeah. Don't put yourself in a precarious situation. But bring it, bring a friend with it. you. By the way, grocery store, parking lots, great place to do that. Banks, uh, police, you know, you can go to all these places. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Meet me at the police station. The police station is Boy. where the deals happen, my friend. Oh, wow. You really are scared, young. You are really scared. Yeah. I'm telling well, you. Well, anyways, I don't know what it's like in New Mexico. I can't imagine it's much, much different. It's not. So, yes, if you want to buy an insane used car... Yeah, it might be a few thousand less than oh, new. Oh, look at this, George. i got to throw one more in here. Used 2015 Honda Civic, 106,000 miles. They're asking eleven nine. There you go. So don't tell me it can't be done. So it can be done, absolutely. And we don't tell people uh, to go out and buy a new car until they have a net worth of a million dollars or more. And that's for one simple reason. It's just too much of your world to spend that kind of money on a depreciating asset. Yeah. So there you go, William. Hope that helps. Good stuff. Thanks for the question. All right, let's go to Buffalo, New York. Steve is on the line. Steve, how can we help? Hi, how you doing, guys? Good. So it was my first time asking for help or calling you guys. Hey, Steve, could <laughs> you uh, adjust your phone a little bit? You feel like you uh, are muffled. Is that better? Not much. Do you, you don't have a sock over the phone, do you? <laughs> no, no, I don't at all. All right, well, let's try that. Go ahead. Okay, so I have, it's my first time calling you guys and asking for help. Okay. Um, I just learned about you guys not too long ago, about two months. Um, last year, or a little bit more than last year, somewhere around June, I had 232000 in debt. Wow. Um, I bought a new truck. My old one died. I do a lot of towing. Paid for the cash. Paid that off. I bought a house, had it refinanced, um, had a lot of problems with my house. It was like the money pit. Mm. I had about ten grand in credit card debt. I'm down to about 135000 And now I'm stuck where i not really paying um, every little penny I have to pay off the debt faster. I'm kind of like stuck trying to figure out how to get back on track. Does that include your mortgage? Um, yeah, that's including my mortgage. Okay, let's parse that out. How much of the consumer debt, aside from the mortgage, what does that add up to? What do you mean consumer debt? Like credit card debt? Everything but the house. What does that debt add up to? Oh, uh, about 12000 Okay, and the rest is the mortgage. 
Yeah. Okay, so now it's a different conversation. So now the question becomes, how can we pay off $12,000 very quickly? So what's your income? Um, you, uh, I make about eighty to 90000 a year. So making 90000 a year, how quickly can you pay off 12000 if you pay off the smallest loan first and start attacking that one with a vengeance? A few months? A few months. There we go. Right. And so you just said you were feeling stuck, and we just showed you a path out within a few months. And now all you have left is the mortgage, which goes into what we call baby step six. So you said you're a new listener. Let me lay it out for you real quick. Baby step one, $1,000 emergency fund. You have that, right? You've got 1000 bucks in the bank? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Anything beyond that we can throw towards the debt. How much cash do you have in the bank? About five grand. Okay. So we can take four of that onto the 12. Now we're down to eight. And now we start listing out the debts, smallest to largest. What's your smallest debt you have right now based on the balance, ignoring the interest rate? I have no interest rate, so it's 0% for uh, one year. I robbed Peter to pay Paul. Okay, so, so what's the lowest balance? Uh, like – Thirteen ninety is the lowest balance. So I mean, I can Great. pay that. So in, you knock in, that out with like the four thousand you have in the bank, and now you're on your way. And so continue that. In a few months, you're completely debt free. Then save up your fully funded emergency fund of three to six months of expenses. We're going to help you out with this by gifting you one year of Financial Peace University. Watch the first few lessons. Get fired up. Continue to watch them, and that will help us walk you through this wild journey of the Ramsey Baby Steps that's helped ten million people get out of debt and build wealth. And you're next, Steve. Steve, you. you got this, man. You're doing much better than you're you not thought. Stuck. You yeah, you're in man. great shape. Thank you so much for the call. More Ramsey Show coming right up. I love real estate, and I want you to have a house, but I don't want a house to have you. That's why you need to get in touch with Churchill Mortgage to make sure you do this right. These guys are awesome. They'll help you get on a smarter mortgage plan because they're committed to doing what's right for you. That means they check in every year with free consultations to help you stay on the right plan. They show you how to save money and interest so you can build wealth faster. They walk you through the total cost of your loan so you can make the best choice. Basically, they care. That's why we call them Ramsey Trusted. You can achieve debt-free home ownership, and Churchill is here to help. Go to their site, churchillmortgage.com slash Ramsey, to start your approval or get more information. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm Kid Coleman, and I'm joined by my colleague, George Camel. We're talking about your life, specifically your money, your work, your relationships. Uh, how many of you are in a stuck situation in your professional life? I'm here today to help with that. Uh, and you'd be surprised at how that might help you in your money life as well. Any work-related questions, let's take some of those today. And then, of course, we're going to take your money questions. George is all fired up. I'm starting to feel bad, George. I'm nobody, ready. Nobody's asking me any specific questions. Well, Ken, the truth is, it's, as it's I terrifying. talk to people and do the Entree Leadership Podcast, you know, is it stats still 68% of workers are disengaged. I know. They I don't know. want to be there. They don't want to be there. They don't like their coworkers. Yeah. They don't like their boss. They don't even yeah. enjoy the work they're I know. doing. And you're going, it doesn't have to be yeah. this way, guys. Yeah. Uh, and also, you feel undervalued and underpaid, that's it. overworked, and they don't see a way and George, out. tell folks what happens when you when you use what you do best to do work you love to produce results that matter to you. That's what a great happens? question. What happens? Well, you light up like a Christmas tree. More money, starter. more meaning. 
more impact, more income. Boom. So I'm here to help out with those questions today. But first, Emily is up in Denver, Colorado, the Mile High City, George. Uh, I like I to learn something I, new every day. I like to give you a little nugget. Emily, how can we help? Thanks for taking my call. You bet. How can we help today, Emily? Hi, I'm trying to uh, get prepared for college savings. I have a three-year-old and a kid on the way. And uh, my husband and I both went to very expensive schools and kind of looking at the 6% growth and tuition year over year, Mm -hmm. the total amount to save is very high. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'm curious if, you know, I'd love for my kids to have scholarships and everything, but I want to be prepared for a worst case scenario. (laughs) And I'm curious if there's any scenario where you'd recommend putting some of that savings in something other than a 529. Mm. What do you mean by other than? Where else would you put it? Are you considering? I guess I'm just, if um, you know, one of my kids ends up going to an in-state school or get a scholarship, then I won't need hopefully all that money. And I'm curious if there's any benefit or recommendations for not getting that um, 10 percent. Well, um, even if you get a scholarship, okay. what's really cool about these plans is you can withdraw against that scholarship. So if there, let's say there's a $20,000 scholarship and you go, well, now I didn't need this money. Well, you can withdraw 20000 from that savings account tax-free. Okay. And so that doesn't need to be a concern. And there's broad application okay. into how you can use those funds when we talk about learning and education. It's very Room broad. Room and board, the laptops, the books, there's so much regardless of where Goes they go towards to school. Trade schools, certifications. Uh, certifications, you know, you talk about online, you know, technology programs like Bethel Tech, which I endorse. I mean, you, they, listen, they, they can go a lot of different ways. It's not like you're trapped. Is that what you're feeling? Okay. I'm just, it seems like a lot of money to sit in a 529, so I wasn't sure if it... Well, how much money are you talking? Put something. Well, like, where I went to school, if I was projecting that for my daughter, it'd be just shy of 800K when she's... What? Okay. Her, Holy... Oh, yeah, sorry, it's I'm, crazy. I, I'm a little short of breath. Why does she need to go there? 800 Why does 000? anyone need to go there? Where is she going? It's just, it's like a top tier school. I, I mean, I don't know if she will, but I would right. love to be able to provide. Please for tell. Her okay, how much did you pay for it? Because I'm now, I'm very curious. Yeah. Well, I had need based scholarships, but the full rate when I went to school was about forty k a year. Okay, that sounds a lot more reasonable compared to eight hundred k for four years. Yeah, and today's rate is like 80K. Okay, can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question? I really, and I'm okay if it's different than than what I think, but I'm curious to know. You said you and your husband both went to very expensive schools. Yeah. Do you think that those schools were worth the tuition based on where you guys are now? And maybe where you could have gone to school? I believe so. I mean, my husband got a full he he did ROTC so he did he got a full scholarship so he didn't end up paying but um I believe it was worth it if if my daughter wanted to go but was, you didn't I but neither sounds like neither one of you paid full tuition or anything close correct correct yeah, yeah. I gotta tell you I I I just want to challenge you on name brand schools um mm-hmm. uh, let, let, let me put it this way uh you remember the last time you went to the doctor? I mean, you're getting ready to have a baby. So you remember your last checkup? Yeah. Yeah. At any point in your medical journey when you were getting baby checkups or your own personal health, have you ever asked your doctor to uh, bring their diploma in and show you their diploma? <laughs> no. Why? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. So how in the world would you trust the life of your baby with this doctor who you don't even know where he went to med school and undergrad. Right. All right. You get where I'm going here? Mm-hmm. I'm not anti-education, Emily, but I'm telling you, nobody cares. Nobody cares where you went to school. Uh, education important for the qualification you need? Yes. Notice I said for the qualification that you need. And your kids, the, the, the landscape of education is changing so rapidly 
that by the time your kids are there, um, the 529 is the safest play. Just to give you an idea right now, okay? So enrollment is down tremendously. 10%, I mean, uh, uh, I just put this out there. I got to look it up. Uh, but enrollment is down so much right now in the United States. And, and it's Gen Z. So this is the generation right now that's in high school, and they're looking at this stuff. And just to give you the numbers, college enrollment is down nearly 10% over the last two years. Only 51% of Gen Z teens are considering a four-year degree. That's a 20-point drop since May of 2020. The point is there's a lot of education options that aren't going to look like they look right now. And so I think the 529, George, the point I'm making is whether I'm right or wrong and what I predict – it gives her flexibility. Oh, yeah. And one other thing, Emily, if you put that money elsewhere, it is going to have a, a tax burden on it. And so if you put right. it in the 529, it goes in tax-free, grows tax-free. You can withdraw it tax-free. You can also change the beneficiary. And it's very loose. This could be spouse. This could be in-laws. It could be children, including stepchildren, foster children, siblings, step-siblings, nieces, nephews, aunts, uncles, first cousins. So the options are endless. This money is not going to go to waste. And I assume you guys have an amazing household income. Can you tell me what it is? I think it's around 500K. There we go. And so here's the thing. By the time they're 16, 17, they start applying to colleges, yeah. you guys could ca- could cash flow this as well, yeah. right? Very easily. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. By the time they're going I, to college, you're going to be completely debt-free, including the house, right? If you're not already? Right. And right. so at that point, making 500000 this is a rhetorical question, by the way, could you cash flow college? The entire audience listening is screaming, yes. Trust me, you can. Right. You couldn't cash flow eighty k a year making 500000 Oh, no, I could. Yeah, definitely. I could there we do 80K. go. So I still would do I the 529. Know, I don't know what that will look like. Because on the stra- road. strategically, it's a smart move to invest with that kind of tax advantage. And you can always change the beneficiary. You can withdraw against the scholarship. There's so many options there. And then a worst case scenario, when you can withdraw it, it's going to create you know income tax and there's a 10% penalty. But that is a worse, worse, worst case scenario. And there's a lot of things you can do with that money. In the yeah, and then there's the fact that your kid may show up one day at 16, 17 and go, hey, I want to do this. I know I want to do this. And this is how I can go do this. And it has nothing to do with a four-year degree and the fancy college that you went to that you'd like your kid to go to. Parents, we got to wake up. And sometimes those fancy colleges are more about our desires than their desires. Whoa, there it is, Ken. Well, it is. It's dropped it's a, a bomb hey, right there. Uh, okay, now I'm fired up. Here's one more for you. College degrees have become more about status than actual success. And that's the reality. And uh, the landscape is changing. So I say all that to say investing in a 529 for relevant education is the way to go, George. You laid it Preach. out beautifully. Preach it. And my goodness, everybody but the household dog is uh, eligible it's amazing. for benefits. Fido might be on there. Who knows? Yeah, we'll dig into that on the commercial dog break. Dog college is the future. Oh, boy. I'm going to get George's meds for the rest of you. Hang on. We'll be right back. This is The Ramsey Show. back to the Ramsey show where we help you win in your life, in your money life, your work life, your relationship life. I'm Ken Coleman joined by George Camel, who is, uh, uh, as I've said, uh, uh, Twice. Today. Choose your words carefully, Ken. Huh? Choose your words carefully. I didn't know what was. Well, I was happen. trying to remember how many times I've said it, but uh, again, uh, if, if you're watching the show on YouTube, George is uh, in the false spirit. Today. I dress to impress, Mr. Coleman. Uh, hey, we're fired up. We're getting ready to head to Dallas this weekend. You got your uh, your outfit, your stage outfit planned. You, you know, got I your, your backpack. I have not thought about yeah, it. You I know. thought we'd, uh, we'd make sure we 
coordinate. Okay. Coordinate our outfits. Oh, no, I don't think we should ever do that. That would be a disaster. <laughs> well, uh, I'm but, excited. Uh, our Smart Conference is uh, one of the biggest Ramsey events we do. We're going to have 6,000-plus people in an arena in Dallas, Texas. It's going to be a fun day. It's been a while day. since we've done something like that. It really has. That thing, uh, the COVID's uh, kept us away. And uh, so we're very excited to be back. Back to arena It's going to be fun. Uh, we're going to be talking about all of the topics we talk about here on the Ramsey Show. Money, uh, life, uh, marriage, relationships, work. Uh, it's so much more. Dave Ramsey, Rachel Cruz, uh, myself, John Deloney, Christina Ellis, and of course, uh, George Camel, uh, and our special guests, Craig and Amy Groeschel, are going to be joining us. And um, it's an awesome day. Uh, it is the Smart Conference this Saturday, October 22nd. Go to RamseySolutions.com slash events. That's RamseySolutions.com slash events to get your tickets now. going to be fun. George, I think you should wear a cowboy hat. I you know, years ago, neither confirm nor deny that I purchased one. Oh, is that right? Last night, for the event. For the event. Now, this is making me very happy. You will remember, uh, years ago, I was uh, the MC of all Ramsey yeah. events, and when we first went to Dallas, I uh, didn't steal. That's 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 aggressive. I asked a gentleman who was sitting on the second row uh, if you could wear his hat, if I could wear his Stetson on the stage, and he let me do it. And it was a great idea until I put it on my head. It was a little sweaty. A little sweaty and a little big. Wow. And so it, was, it just looked silly on me. It was like down on the top of the ears, and I looked like I had my dad's cowboy hat on. No one believes that we're wearing a cowboy hat. The crowd loved it, hat. though. Huh? No one believes us wearing a cowboy hat. I've got a nice one now. The one that actually fits my head. But uh, I don't wear it very often, and for good reason. <laughs> Some guys can pull off a, a Stetson. You know, I don't hide it under a bushel. That's how I feel about the hair, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> you work too hard on that. To oh, hide it. man. I but it's going to be fun. It's going to be a fun Make event. the drive if you're even near Dallas. People fly from all over the country to yeah. join us for this. So yeah. just because you're not in Dallas doesn't mean you're not invited. That's right. going to be a fun day. Love to see you there. Abraham is up in Dallas. Oh, speaking of Dallas, Texas, Abraham is there. How can we help? Hey there. So I'm going to lay out my situation. I graduated this year, and I go on a mission trip next year starting in July. That'll be nine months. So I'm basically framing my economic situation around that. Uh, I own – well, I have purchased an RV from my grandparents that they were – that they were selling that uh, $8,000. I have 6300 left on that. Uh, but I do not have a car. I have a full-time job, and I am using family vehicles to transit to and from that. My question is, should I pay off uh, that? I, I need to pay off the RV by the time I leave. Uh, should I pay that off aggressively? Will I throw everything except my emergency fund at the RV, treat it as a consumer debt? There's no interest on it, uh, but I do want to get rid of the debt as fast as possible. Or should I continue paying $700 a month that I am to be on track to pay it off by the end of, uh, by June and, uh, and by like, just save for a car, uh, immediately. Are what you are living you? in the RV? Yes, sir. Okay. My home. So this is your home. So we can't, we're not going to do anything else with it. And how much do you have in the bank? Uh, $1,600. Okay. Well, there's not a, a ton you can throw at it. Obviously, I would tell you to throw 600 of the 16 at it uh, to, to kickstart it by an extra month. How much faster right, can you I do mean, that while saving for a car? Because it sounds like you need to split well, the difference. Yeah, what I mean is I just recently got a job, so um, 1500 take-home pay is what I'm going to have. What I mean is, like, should I throw that 1500 at it after expenses is what I mean. But you still have no vehicle. Correct. So I think we need to get you – maybe we take the the next three months of income, get you a vehicle, and then get aggressive paying on this RV loan that you owe to grandma and grandpa. Okay. Is that a personal loan, or do you take out a loan to purchase it? No, sir. It's uh, it's uh, basically just – it's an understanding that I owe them that money, and I'm okay. paying it. Uh, I'm being consistent on that. Okay. Well, it seems like A1 is you need a vehicle to get around in. And so knowing you're not going to need it for very long, I would get as cheap of a vehicle as you can that is reliable. That's not going to have $5,000 in repairs in the next six months. Mm -hmm. How long are you planning to live in the RV? Uh, feasibly, I could live in it until probably I get married. I mean, um, right. just as I, as I sock away money for a down payment on a How old account. are you? I'm 19. Okay. Yeah, okay. it's a young man's game, Ken. He can do it. Oh, hundred percent. There's no question about it. Are you? Are you? Are you? Where? Where are you parking the RV? 
Uh, it's on my family's property in the back corner. Okay. Uh, we have a fairly sizable property. Okay, gotcha. So you're all set there. Yeah. You're just so how much? Money. How much wow. can you save each month for this car if you put everything towards that goal? Uh, I could save probably thirteen hundred for the car. Oh, awesome! I do have a couple of insurance payments. So let's say that's three months. You have thirty thirty nine hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. Could that get you a beater car in your area? Maybe off Facebook Marketplace oh, sure. or something, or someone you know. Getting rid of an old car? Yes, for sure. Probably four months would be even better. Okay. And bit. then after four months, you have a car. Now you can put all of that margin towards the RV, and you're going to have that paid off by the time you leave for the mission trip. Yeah. Okay. I like this plan. Okay. The The question is, can you find the reliable car under four grand? And it sounds like you're willing to do it. Uh, Reliable? I mean, you, you need to it speak to It may not be this. pretty. It may not. I know I paid six grand for my Honda. And it, you know, it had a little bit of body damage, but mechanically it was very sound. So yeah. just find the ugliest thing you can find that is mechanically sound. That's the key to yeah. finding a deal. I mean, you got a 19 year old, you got a lot more options, you know, than just that. I mean, it's like uh, we didn't ask, but can he bike? Can he bicycle? I, don't I mean, know it depends where he's on going. how intense you want to be. I understand it can get cold in the Dallas area. I don't but... know where he's going. It could be a far distance in Dallas. I know, I know. You know, he could get a horse. Oh, boy. You know how I feel about horses, Ken. <laughs> it may be a great mode of transportation. <laughs> oh, George, uh, that's terrible. Yeah. Hannah is up in Austin, Texas. Hannah, how can we help? Hey, y'all. Thanks for taking my call. You bet. I'm calling because I have a car. I don't owe anything on it, and it has about a year left. Um, it tells it you? Goes out on me. <laughs> Oh, I can tell. Is that a I feature? I love her response. Uh, George, I, I've already <laughs> thought about this response. I know. So you know this car is going to die one year from today. Approximately. <laughs> I love it. Okay. <laughs> okay. We What's don't have question? time to break that down. I have a good bit of savings. Um, I do have a difficult time parting with it, though. I'm just wondering... Should I continue to save up until my car completely gives out on me, or should I just bite the bullet, spend the money on the car now? Well, it depends. You're going to have to make a bunch of repairs on it in the next 12 months? Um, the car is worth about 2000 I need to do around $600 worth of repairs. And then you could sell it for 2600 or more at that point? Yeah. Okay. If you'll recoup the cost on it, it may be worth it. How much money do you have saved? About twenty-five thousand. Oh, awesome! What's your income? Uh, ninety grand. Wonderful. Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, that sounds very reasonable. I mean, why don't you just go ahead and get the car now? She doesn't want to part with the savings. Yeah. Part with the savings or part with the car? The savings. Is it a sentimental thing? I don't want to part with the um, savings. I grew up with a lot of financial yeah, insecurity, it's a so. Okay. I just have well, do a you have an emergency time. fund? Yeah, twelve twelve months. You have 12 months of emergency savings. Wow. Yes. What if you eased into it and maybe got a really nice $10,000 car and just kind of like eased into this process? Because it's this is a big emotional thing, George. Well, yeah. You've When you have that kind of background, there's some financial trauma here. Yeah. If you have 12 months of savings, you're safe. But your body is saying, we're not safe, we're not safe. And so I might honestly look into some counseling to help on that side. But financially, this is a very wise move. You've done the work. Yeah. Don't Go wait till it dies. Go ahead and sell it as is. Get a new car. George, good stuff this hour. I want to thank the team uh, for keeping us on the air. And you, America, this is The Ramsey Show. Do you love a good Dave rant? Want to see the latest Ramsey Show videos going viral? Check out your favorite moments from The Ramsey Show on YouTube. Go watch and subscribe to The Ramsey Show channel on YouTube. of Ramsey Solutions broadcasting from the Pods Moving and Storage Studios. This is the Ramsey Show. It's where America hangs out to have a conversation about life, money, 
work, relationships, and more. The phone number is 888-825-5225. I'm Ken Coleman. Co-hosting with me today, George Camel. It's uh, Coleman and Camel, the law firm you should never uh, Don't hire, hire us for law advice. Yeah, not at all. But we can give you advice. It's free, so it is worth uh, what you pay for. Keep that in mind. But we're here to help out, uh, specifically in areas of money and work-life issues as well. 888 825 Alberta, Canada is where we go next. Maggie is there. Maggie, how can we help? Oh, hi. Um, really awesome to talk to you guys. I feel like I'm talking to celebrities. This is really cool. Wow. You need to get out more, Maggie. <laughs> yeah, I got to tell you, yeah. you need to set your sights a little higher if we're celebrities. But thank you for the nice words. We're kind. excited to talk to you. Nice. Okay. Um, so I guess like my question is, so I'm a single mom and I work full time and I'm just wondering how I can increase and actually start making income from my side hustle. Okay. What is your side hustle? Um, I make reusable baby wipes from upcycled material. All right. Now I got to tell you, I am absolutely locked in now. Uh, how does this, how does one do this and explain what that means? Upcycled, like uh, explain the whole deal. Yeah. So I just, um, I buy, I go to like, um, a thrift store and I get essentially like old sheets that people have donated, obviously not like super damaged ones um and i use that material instead of using new um and then i essentially sew them together in a nice way that people can use uh to use um for baby like specifically like baby bum wipes because i use them and obviously being a single parent i saved a lot of money that way um so you take old you take used bed sheets yes cut them up sew them into uh, baby bum size wipes and you, and it's like a cloth wipe but it's a sheet and then you wash them and reuse them? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Wow. wow. Well, what has this business done so far? Um, It hasn't yet. That's the thing. So I, I'm really good at making them um, but everything else I get really overwhelmed right. <laughs> and the well, we need to make sure there's media. a market need yeah. for it. Do, do, Are people do, asking for do this? You, do you tell your girlfriends who have babies about this concept, and do you do you let them borrow some if that's a thing? Um, I definitely have gave some away. I guess a part of me like maybe feels a bit weird. I'm just like, oh my god, like they're gonna think I'm a weirdo for for being so obsessed with my own idea, <laughs> yeah. if that makes any sense. So well, like, certainly. it is a really niche thing, right? It's so. extremely niche. Now, I've heard of the reusable diapers, and I imagine it's something similar to that. Well, George doesn't know what this is like, but back in my day, yeah, we had cloth diapers, you know? So I get it. It's so just this falls under that category, right, Maggie? Yes. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but the reason that people moved on from cloth diapers is the reason why I think you got a challenge with this product, and I don't want to... You know, part this isn't the Shark pun. Tank here. I, I don't mean, want to poo-poo your idea. No pun intended. No, I actually yeah. intended that pun. Actually, I had to. Yeah. It was just right there. But 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 here's the thing. Uh, the reason we moved on from that is because of the uh, just the sheer amount of time that's saved. You know, with the baby wipes and and then we throw them away and and then we move on. And I don't want to again rob you of your joy on this, but you've got to determine if there's an actual market for this. And we start small, and it is overwhelming for anybody to have an idea, no matter what it is, and then try to get that idea out there. But the way you start is testing in real life. Okay, so are any of my girlfriends interested in this? Like, you literally need to go, hey, I need you to shoot me straight. You're not gonna hurt my feelings. But if if I made these for you and let you test them out, will you test them out and tell me whether or not you would do this? You got to get some real feedback on the idea here because this could be so niche that nobody in the world wants to do it. And so then we go, okay, I love the idea for me. It's a novelty. It's something I'm going to do. But as it relates to being a single mom and making money, I've got to do something where I'm using my skill and experience and I'm transferring value. That's what you've got to do here. So I think it's a long shot on this. I want to. I don't want to be unkind, but I think this is just a long, long, long shot. And I wouldn't sp- put much more time into it other than it takes to really, truly test it locally. 
Okay. Do you understand what I'm saying? I don't. I don't want to deflate you, but I'm just telling if you. If you're using this as a passion project, I think it's great. If you're trying to pay off debt and you've got financial goals ahead of you, yeah, I think you should find something you can do today that will bring in money today, guaranteed, and you can still work on this and have it be a passion project. And there are ways you can try to test this idea. Maybe yeah. jo- join some of these kind of crunchy mom Facebook groups. People that really want to lean into natural products. What does and crunchy mean? That means they're very. They want to go all natural. They don't want to use. Oh. You know, traditional medication. They want to use essential oils and more natural. I think that's the target demo, Maggie. I would assume, right? Of people who would be interested in this. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely want you to test it, but test it locally. To George's point, maybe in some uh, some online communities. Yes. Put your product up there. Show them how you do it. Uh, see if you can get a blog post out there. You just got to see if there's any appetite for this product. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. I guess I'm just like stressed too because I'm on baby step two and it's like I'm a single mom. So working, you know, I, if I could work 24 hours a day, I definitely would be right now because that's how determined I feel. But yeah. having a little one, it's just like I need something that I can do from home at least. Okay. Right? And I thought. All right. Now that. So, so here's the deal. Let me help you right there because I, I want you to test this out and keep this thing alive until there's no evidence that says there's a market for this. Maybe there is a market for it. But right now we need to put that on the back burner. And what you need to be doing is, okay, how many hours a week do you have to be able to work? And what can you do remotely? And remote work is as popular as it's ever been on this planet. And you just need to look at what skills you have, what experience you have, make a list, and you go, okay, I'm going to apply for these type of jobs. Maybe it's a customer service job where you're on the phone X amount of hours a day helping people. It's not fun. It's not great. But it allows you to get out of debt and be at home near the baby. Do you understand what our focus is? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You look, you just do what you can do right now. Okay? Because of the baby and because of the debt and everything you got going on, we are focused on high priority stuff, all right? And then you could test the 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 baby wipe thing on the side while you're doing that, not put any pressure on yourself. That needs to be a labor of love, something that you want to see if it works, but no pressure on it. And that'll take away that feeling, George, of being overwhelmed. Because, listen, any entrepreneur, no matter what the product or service is, just to think of the finished product and how do I get it out there. But that can take years to get off the ground. can paralyze you. Analysis paralysis is what it's called. And uh, right now, you got to be focused on paying off debt, getting that emergency fund. Baby step three is, is, is next. And then you're on your way. And that the, margin will free you up to focus on the entrepreneurial it ventures. It will. Yeah. I learned a lot. I can't wait to tell Stacy what I learned about Absolutely. The, the new improved baby white. Very what a time exciting. to be alive. It is. Very exciting. This is The Ramsey Show. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm Kid Colvin. I'm joined by George Campbell. We're here for you this hour, taking your phone calls about money, life, work, relationships, and, and so forth. I, uh, <laughs> I'm i sorry. I'm still, I got a little chuckle still. I'm, we're lots of conversation from our last uh, segment. So here we go. I'm going to focus, and we're going to Chris in Bismarck, North Dakota. Chris, how can we help? Hey, can you hear me? Loud and clear, sir. What's going on? Hey, yeah, so I uh, recently started a uh, construction business about six months ago. Oh, nice. And business has been debt-free, and me and my wife are almost debt-free, just our mortgage (laughs) on our house. So since I started the business, our budget and kind of everything to keep that out of debt was, you know, our budget and everything kind of got thrown out the window. So now that we're a little bit into it, kind of have a a pulse for our income with the business, (laughs) Um, trying to trying to figure out how we should budget, how much I should pay myself from the business, and how to kind of make a formula for that. Sure. What uh, can you give us an idea? What your cash flow situation is? What you're bringing in? 
So, so far the business, it seems, you know, it's, it's really up and down, but it seems like it's about an average of maybe uh, five to six grand profit okay. a month. And that includes so, after paying you or no? That, no, that's, that's what I'm trying to All right. That's what I thought. Okay, great. So that's five or yeah. six grand, but we're not paying you yet. All right. Are you making right. any money I'd anywhere be- else? Any income? Uh, my wife she has a couple part-time jobs, and so far that's just been going into our uh, emergency fund, trying to build that up a little bit further. All right, great. So you're living off what your wife makes, and you got five to six, or average five to six k in profit from the construction company. Is that all sitting in a savings account? Um, yeah, I mean, I've been pulling out what I need to to pay myself. It's it's in its own business account, and I've just been pulling as I need to, to, to okay. pay our, right, our expenses. Okay, that's where I'm confused, because I asked you if you if of that profit you were paying yourself, and you said no, but now you're saying you've been oh. pulling some out. Yeah, yeah, I guess it, that's that's five grand of what the company makes, and that's, that's total. So out of that five grand-ish, <laughs> I've just been able to just, just pull money as I need it. Okay, do you have any savings the, for the company? For the company, yeah, it's, it's right... Right close to ten grand with accounts payable. Okay. All right. So beyond your overhead, your expenses, all of that, how much could you pull from the profits? I mean, if I if I wanted to, since the business is debt free and once everything's paid, I could probably take, you know, three to four grand a okay. month. So let's say you start paying yourself a salary of four grand a month, that's forty eight thousand a year, mm-hmm. year one. And mm-hmm. then your goal is to increase that every year. As you have more and more profit and you start to get a handle on the overhead and you're, you're putting some of this in retained earnings and savings for the business as well from that profit. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to figure yeah. out. How well, much you've got, he's got me, 10, how much you in uh, so you've got 10,000 in the company savings account right now. And so mm-hmm. I, I'm George, I'm going to be Is a little enough? bit, I, I think I'd be more conservative, George. I'd kind of want to see him try to limit himself if possible to maybe twenty five hundred a month. Let's say he keeps that average of five thousand. This is a rule of thumb. I want to get what your take is, George. There's no hard and fast rule. Just putting there it isn't. out there. But I'd just be conservative right now if I were you, Chris, in your shoes. Well, especially in construction. I mean, exactly. that equipment is expensive. Right. And so I'd want to build up the company's retained earnings. That's what we call it in entree leadership. We talk about savings for a company. I'd probably be paying myself half of so let's let's say on a six thousand dollar profit month, maybe pay yourself three and put three in retained earnings account. I want to, you know, I'm going to make Until some sacrifices personally so that I can build up the safety gland and the in the preparation for this construction company, which hopefully we get to a point where you got six months of your income in that account. Do you see where I'm going with this? Right. Yeah. As you grow, yeah, it, and that's where, you know. Now right. once once it gets right. going and you're spitting off more profit. You know, I think that formula changes. You pay yourself more, save a little less. And as it grows, mm-hmm. things might change as you might, you know, hire a few team members. Is that the goal for you? Um, you know, that's kind of a possibility, probably not anytime soon. But, yeah, the biggest thing right now is just, um, you know, the business is, is doing well enough on its own where I feel like I can try to pay myself consistently yeah. and then budget from that, you know. Or, I think or you're minimum. right. I think you're right. Yeah. You're, you're doing it the, the right way. Have you read the book Entree Leadership yet? No, I haven't. Okay, that'll be our gift to you today. Uh, you're already living out a lot of the principles in that book. This is Dave Ramsey's number one best-selling book, How He Built This Place from a Card Table in His Living Room to the Empire It Is Today with 1,100 team members and a whole campus. And you're doing it right. The biggest piece here is doing it all debt-free. And you've done that. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you're moving at the speed of cash. And you're willing to pay yourself a small amount right now as you grow this thing. And so I would make it a personal goal to increase my salary every year. And when you're a business owner like that, there could be a lot more margin. You might have an amazing year and you pay yourself a hundred grand. Yeah. And you've got the savings and you're you're doing it the right way. So we're gonna send you that book. Yeah. I think it'll help walk you through that. You can also listen to the Entree Leadership Podcast, which I hope, where we're helping leaders and business owners win every single day. Yeah. But a, love to hear that. Yeah, it's a great show. Yeah. And and Chris, you're doing it the right way. Grow slow. 
you know, and, and, and be okay being small, right? Small and slow is the way to get this thing going, this construction company, because it is a, it is a customer based business in the sense of they start talking about you. Hey, Chris did a good job on this. Chris did a good, and they start spreading the word. You're going to have more work than you can keep up with. And then that puts you in a really great place. As George was saying, as you have to maybe go out and, and, and do some, you know, subcontracting and things like that. So you're off to a good start. Really proud of you. Yes. I love seeing a guy start something like that and having ten grand in savings, no debt on the business. You it's don't amazing. see that a lot, especially no. in construction, because it's very tempting, uh, and you can make a reasonable case if you're not anti debt the way we are. That oh, I gotta have this equipment. I had to go get this fifty grand uh, tractor, Ken, to get this yeah. thing started. Yeah, exactly. I love how you talked about it. it. Feels like you know a lot about tractors. I know just enough to yeah, be dangerous. That's right. Kevin is up next in Boise, Idaho. Kevin, how can we help? Thank you for taking my call, guys. I am 65 years old. Uh, I turn 66 next month. I own my own business. I'm planning on continuing working. I'm also planning on taking my Social Security March of 2023. Should I use part of my Social Security to pay for long-term insurance as we are already putting in 15 to 20% into retirement, Roth, IRA, whatever? Uh, we're also 100% debt-free. Thank you, Dave and staff. Um, and we have five to six months already in emergency fund. And what should we do with the rest of the 55, or with the Social Security money, I mean, um, after, after we start collecting it? Awesome. We just took a 30-day year, we just took a 30-day European vacation paid in full. Hey, um, that's to pretty go. awesome. So how much is the long-term insurance going to cost you? I'm going to say probably five to 600 a month. Okay. And have you shopped that with our, with our friends at Xander Online? I have not, but I'm going to, yes. Okay, make sure you do your homework on that to make sure you're getting the best rate. And so you can jump on RamseySolutions.com and do that. But once you have that number, now it becomes part of your monthly budget, and you are still running this okay. business. How much, What's your household income? Um, we, we made 42000 last year, and still we're able to take months off and all that, so we're good. You're living on a lot less than you make. That's fantastic. That's right. Okay, what's in your nest egg? Uh, we have probably eight to ten months of emergency fund. But beyond that, do you have any uh, investing? Any IRAs, four hundred one ks? Yes. What's oh, yeah. in that? I, I've got Ross. I've got IRAs. What's it add up to? Eighty thousand in that. Eighty thousand. Okay. So the question is, how are we going to long-term plan for retirement, and then what is the best use of the money in the different buckets? And so, are you working with a financial right. advisor right now? Yes, I am. Okay. I would sit down with them and make a game plan, not just for the next year, but hey, what does the next 10 years look like? When can I actually retire? And then how can I use that Social Security best? You know, should I use some of the tax advantage money first to cover the long-term care versus using my Social Security? I would start with the Social Security for now, but I'm curious to see what a full plan would look like as you map out all the different buckets you have to utilize it. Because you might live another 30 years, and so I don't want you to run out of money either. Yeah, absolutely. But boy, is he in great shape and uh, coming, off the, uh, coming off the 30-day trip to Europe, George. Debt free. Yeah. Uh, we didn't get a postcard. I haven't seen one from Kevin. Did you see? I will Did await. you get one? We'll have to just Google pictures for now. Yeah. By the way, we uh, we just recently had dinner, uh, the Camels and the Colmans. Maybe we should do a European uh, couples trip. I, I don't, don't know. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you seem very excited about that. We'll get the wives together on that one. <laughs> Uh, we may not have vacation together. We do love doing the Ramsey Show together. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. We're thrilled that you're with us. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by George Camel. Tonight's a big night, George. It is. Do you have your healthy popcorn ready? Do you have your Orville Redenbacher's movie theater butter ready? I got a box of it at home. I got okay. a box. What are we talking about? Well, tonight is the big 
viewing party where you're premiering the very popular runaway hit Borrowed Future. We're launching it on YouTube tonight at 7 p.m. Central, 8 Eastern. Borrowed Future is our award-winning documentary that uncovers the dark side of the student loan industry. It's an incredible watch. It's gripping. Make you sick to your stomach. Make you angry. But it is good 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 to watch it watch it with your kids watch it with your family uh it's going to be awesome uh and then after tonight you can view borrowed future on youtube for free on demand the film is still available on amazon prime apple tv google play and RamseySolutions.com, where you can rent it ad free so we want you to see this for your own information but also to spread the word help us disrupt the toxic student loan industry. Join us tonight for the Barred Future Watch Party on the Ramsey Show's YouTube channel. Uh, George and I will not be uh, appearing live. Uh, That's fair to say. As, as you know, in the corner somewhere like Mystery Science Theater. You know, th- th- there was some talk of that. Is that the director's cut? Yeah, well, honestly, I wanted to do it, but George's people wouldn't work with us. Uh, my I'm people sorry. talked to George's people, and we couldn't come together on the whole deal. Uh, James may show up if there's free popcorn because he's never turned out a free meal in his life. I do love some movie and a popcorn. You can't beat that. And yeah. it's it's an hour and a half long, so you yeah. know you'll still make it before bedtime. It's at seven central. And seriously, get get the, a crew together, get some friends, get the kids, and go. Hey, we're watching this. Incentivize them if you have to. Get them some dinner beforehand, their favorite meal, and go. We're gonna watch this, and we wanna have a conversation after yeah. it's over. Uh, would that include TV trays? Or oh, we I gonna... miss a good TV trade. No, don't you? Well, if you're going to sit down and watch it. Yes. Yeah. Bring those back. Yeah, those are great. Apparently, cloth diapers and cloth baby wipes are back. It's all It's all. So we'll circle. bring the TV trays as well. So there you go. All right, back to the phones we go. Eva joins us in Dayton, Ohio. Eva, how can we help? Hello. Hello. How are you doing? Oh, we're having a blast. How can we help? I hear you. And with the popcorn, I hear you. <laughs> yeah, come on, Eva. <laughs> What's your favorite popcorn? Uh, the the old-fashioned and the big, huge pop. Uh, in the big, huge pot with oh. some oil and just let it shake. You know, you have come on. Well, I'm 60, so you have come to shake on, it. Eva. You put the, <laughs> so you're talking about just pouring the kernels in yes, with the oil. See, Eva gets yeah. it. Come yeah. on. That's, uh, that's do, do you do any stuff. salt, Eva? Any salt on it? No, I just do butter. Just butter. All mm-hmm. right, all right. To each his own. Eva, <laughs> how can we help? Okay, I moved from Arkansas to Dayton. Um, when I got a phone, when I called home, my mom was crying on the phone. Huh. Um, I get here less than two weeks after I get home. Um, she has an ascending aorta aneurysm. Oh, my. Mm. Yeah. I wasn't here two weeks, and she passes out. Mm. Of course, she sends me to go get her ice cream, and my son is in the yard. And um, my question is, I worked in Arkansas, uh, worked all the way up until I moved here, mm-hmm. and haven't worked a full-time job, a no job. I've just been caring for my mom because one thing went from shingles, aneurysm, to something else, to something else, and I'm still caring for her now. Oh, my. Uh, yeah. I get a letter in the mail yesterday. IRS is telling me I owe them Three thousand seven hundred and sixty four dollars and thirty seven cents. Now I need to find out or I need I need y'all's help. Yeah, sure. Because, <laughs> and because uh, do you know what I'm, that's referring to? Is it clear it in the say, letter? It doesn't say anything in the letter about it. It's just it's like one of those, you know, how they payment internal revenue service. Oh yeah. Sorry. And, and they try to make it scary. Have and, you verified yeah. this? Uh, I called, and you know you have to stay on on hold for about twelve years. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. Yeah, they don't yeah. actually have a human uh, yeah. there to help you after they send yeah. you a letter like that. It's classic right. federal government. How are they yeah. asking for payment? Oh, now here's the here's the biggest part. Uh oh. Now, if, oh, here's the greatest thing on their back page. It says, "Oh, if you we can settle this and not give any interest." You will not be to prevent any interest applicable penalties from continuing from continuing. Pay the amount by November seventh. Wow! If I had that, you know, hey, I, I don't know if this sounds legit. I think Eva. it might be a scam. Are you serious? Do they have? I would not pay a dime until I hear from them directly, <laughs> and you contact them. And so I know that stinks to be on the phone. Contact them no, whatever way really. you can. 
Because, yeah, I've tried and tried. I've been, I was on the phone probably. I laid the phone down. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you got to get a good IRS household project. Thing. Just leave that thing on hold. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah i've been there you can fold a couple loads of laundry before they pick up oh yeah, yeah. And wash clothes do a car did, all of that yeah, have did they picnic. tell you what this is for it doesn't say what it's for an annual reminder of balance due of taxes yeah i don't know if this is legit if after seven years and you haven't been working have you been filing no. any kind of return do you have any no. income none none at all none and it's the little IRS feel, you know, the little scales with the eagle. I think that's the eagle or whatever yeah, it is. Nobody knows. Nobody wants to look at the IRS letterhead long right. enough to know and what I'm, it is. <laughs> well, I'll give you some homework to do, Eva. Go to irs.gov slash help. Okay. irs.gov slash help. Slash help. And there's a, there's a section there that says letter from the IRS. I want mm-hmm. you to read through that, and it will help you gauge if this is a legitimate letter from them or not. Okay. Okay. But do your homework and don't pay a dime until you verify this with them. And if you do owe it, you got to get this monkey off your back, and you're going to do whatever it takes to scrape together the money and get. It what rid about of it. one of our tax advisors? I, I feel like they could help her. Yeah, with it's this. worth uh, reaching out to one of them at RamseySolutions.com, and you can click on our recommended pros there and get in touch with a tax advisor and see who will look at this letter strategies. and know whether it's legit. Number one, and then number two, what to do to to to, to get this thing cleared up. It feels it feels very very suspect to me. The kids, I think, call it sus. Uh, okay. Yeah, uh, there. I taught you a new word, Eva. You can use that. Yeah, Throw that yeah. around with the teens. They'll think you're very cool. <laughs> so RamseySolutions.com. Yes. Go under recommended pros. Yeah. Yeah. It'll or, say it'll say Ramsey recommends. Okay. And okay. you want a tax advisor, one of our trusted tax advisors. Tell them you called the show, and okay. Ken and George think that the letter is sus, and okay. uh, that's all they need to hear. And uh, George, okay. Yeah, I love that she's writing this down. It makes me so <laughs> happy. Am. And take in some of that fresh popcorn too. That, that'll, that'll help. Oh. I, oh, oh, bless your heart, Eva. I would not do anything until we verify, 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 verify on this. I mean, people are okay. getting scammed all the time on this. And yeah, and I'm, I'm, because when I, you know, I'm just, how are y'all texting me, and I'm not, I haven't filed. In seven years. Well, my only I'm, thinking of it was back taxes and something wasn't right with an old tax yeah. return, and they're finally the getting last, around to it because they're slow as molasses. The last, yeah, the last thing that I got was a refund, and that was seven, eight years ago. That was probably about eight years ago. Mm. I got a refund. It, it wasn't. It was a whole hundred and something dollars. That's all. Okay. Well, um, here's what I want you to do. We want you to uh, take the advice that George gave you there um, with the IRS website. Let's see what we can find out there. And then if you don't get any clarity there, I do think it's worth seeing one of our uh, Ramsey Trusted tax advisors to get to the bottom of this. And they will help you get to the bottom of it very quickly and, and, and efficiently. And, uh, and then bless your heart for taking care of your mom. I also want to encourage you to be thinking about some type of income. Uh, even though you're watching your mom, I, I want to see you uh, at least be working part time and, and try to be bringing in some income once we get this thing settled. So, thank you so much for calling, uh, George. It's a it's a scary thing, man. And and There's bad a ton people of scams out there. Bad people play on this stuff. You see anything on other IRS scams? There are, there? Well, there's there should be letters. There should be a notice number or a letter number, either the top or bottom right hand corner of that, that will actually go. Oh, this is legit. If it doesn't have that, it's probably fake. Yeah, absolutely. Good stuff there. Well, thank you so much for the call, Eva. Uh, For the rest of you, don't move. We got more of The Ramsey Show coming right up. This is The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman, and he is George Camel. 
We're thrilled to be with you. The phone number is 888 825 Our scripture of the day comes from Luke 5, 16. But Jesus himself would often slip away to the wilderness and pray. Our quote from Nikola Tesla. Oh, George, this is for you today. That has nothing to do with actual Teslas. I know. But it's his last name. Sure. Inspired. I mean, Inspired me to greatness. Yeah. No, the whole brand is inspired by Tesla. Come on, you know this. His quote, be alone. That is the secret of invention. Be alone. That is when ideas are born. Do you find that to be true, George? I guess I'll leave you to it then, Ken. <laughs> yeah, if you could leave the studio, that'd be great. No, do you find, uh, whether it be uh, behind the wheel of a car? Uh, when you think uh, about it, some of the best ideas happen. You're, you're on a run, you're in the car, you're in the shower, yeah. and a great idea happens. You know what it is for me? It's uh, yard work. Oh, I should try that sometime. Well, it's, you're allergic to everything. But uh, the idea of a monotonous task um, that is so mundane, what happens is the brain does fire. And it just gets really creative in that time. I so love that, that is that is really good advice. We don't let ourselves get bored enough in today's culture to even get there. That's exactly right. You know, just alone with your thoughts is a good thing. We need to do more of that. Uh, all right, to Kansas City, Missouri, we go. Jonathan is there. Jonathan, how can we help? All right, how you doing, Kenny and George? Man, we're having a blast. How can we help? Yes, sir. Um, my question is: Been working at my job for seven years. It's union. So they have job postings. I'm a truck driver that does delivery driving outside in the weather. And I have an opportunity to switch to daytimes to become where I only bump docks and deliver. And I'm having trouble with it because I am a single father, which means I would have to try to find daycare or a babysitter in the morning. Mm. Okay. Um. That's a tough one because, uh, as you know, daycare is very, very expensive. Um, yes. So what's your situation now? Who's watching the kids when you're on the night shift? Right now, my mother watches my daughter, and if I can't get off in time, uh, my little sister will come pick her up, and I'll just go to my little sister's house and grab okay. her when I get off. So what's the, what, is the, what would the new schedule be? What would the hours be that you need to cover child care? Um, the hours are technically eight to four, but with myself being a truck driver, it could go to eight to six. Okay. So your daughter is not in school. Is that what I'm understanding? No, no. She's uh, only four months right now. Okay. Gotcha. Well, you know, I, I wish I had a, a slick answer here that was just, Hey, one, two, three, four, this is what you do. And I don't think it's that simple. Um, because of uh, you don't have the family that can watch the child during that time. And it uh, doesn't sound like you have many options there. And then uh, daycare is extremely expensive. Uh, and that would pretty much put you in a bad financial situation. Is that correct? Yes, it would. Where are you at right now financially? Uh, right now, I'm uh, currently on baby step two. Um, Right, yeah, baby now, step two right now. How much debt do you have left? Uh, I have 50000 left. What kind of debt is that? Um, car loans, a little bit of student loans, um, and past mistakes I made from previous marriage. And what's your income? Income right now is sixty, around sixty to 65000 It will be dropping down to 58000 uh, if I was to take the position. Yeah, that was my worry, is you get a drop in income, and we have to now have extra expense with child care. And so I don't see yes. how that would work logistically right now for you. It may in the future, once we're out of debt. What's the car worth? Uh, my car, the car, the cars, uh, I don't have the cars anymore. But you said you had a car loan, but you still, you don't yes. have the car, but you're still paying on the loan? Uh the loans are right now, and um, I'm paying on one of the loans from the car, even though I don't have it anymore. Where's the car? Because they took me to court. Um, they they were repossessed. Oh, man. And you got multiple yeah. car loans? Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, I, I made a lot of bad mistakes in my past marriage. Uh, yeah, that's all right. A lot. We're just trying to help you create a path forward here. What are your options with the repoed car? Um, right now, one of them uh, took me to court. This was before I 
actually got connected with you guys. So I made a settlement where I'm paying two fifty a month until it's paid off. The other one, uh, I haven't been contacted from them yet, but I know listening to you guys to try to have some money to where I can settle it for a cheaper price. Pennies on the dollar, hopefully. Where's the other car? I have neither one of them. They're both repoed? I, I, yeah, I don't, yeah. Oh, man. And you're just, are you driving around in the truck right now just for work? Uh, oh, no, sir. I um, saved up and bought me a cash car. Okay. Toyota. Good. I'd like to know what you would identify as the best way, based on your area and your schedule and what you'd like to happen, for you to make more money. And especially in today's world where drivers are at a premium. Um, and I know you can't do over-the-road stuff because of the the child. But I just I, I wonder how we could make more money. I would be focusing on how can I raise my income to the point that where daycare, while expensive – would be something that I could offset and still get out of debt, still save. Because I feel like that's going to give you more freedom in your life too. Do you know what I mean? Where you're not in this night owl schedule and, and not getting to see your baby. And I, I just, I want you identifying and looking for opportunities that may be a lot more attractive financially for you to where you can then uh, afford the daycare. Yes, sir. I've also currently been um, searching for other jobs um and trying to find something that could also pay me it's just like i said with the trucking business sometimes there's not really a set time that's right where you would be well out. and to your point to get out of the the trucking business uh is is, is something you need to be looking at we we have wages at an all-time high right now um and you know george he's in that 65 thousand dollar range you know to be able to make 25 35 dollars an hour in manufacturing and warehousing right now is very realistic yeah um depending on the company depending on the area uh but to be able to have a set schedule where you can schedule your life around i mean this is doable jonathan and and um you know you, you've got to be uh, at this point going okay i've got skills and i've got some experience and i'm not limited to driving a truck and it feels like there's a little bit of that on you and um, I understand it because it's what you know. Um, but the reality is, is if you think, George, you know, what, what, you know, if you're hiring somebody who's going to drive a truck, you're looking for somebody who's dependable. Somebody's going to do what they're supposed to do, show up when they're supposed to show up. There's a lot of autonomy in that. You got to get, you know, the, the car to go. Or, that's right. But the ability to, to work, you know, in, in manufacturing or warehousing, which again, we're seeing jobs explode. That's why I'm specifically mentioning that. Uh, there's a lot of the same crossover. You don't have to have a ton of experience. You just got to be dependable. You got to be trainable, teachable, coachable. Yeah. And uh, then you can get a, a situation where, you know, to offset that, George, what would you say to someone like him who's in a, a situation like that where you go, man, childcare is going to cost X amount a month. So salary after taxes to budget that, it is doable, but you're going to have to increase income. Yeah, because if we can go from 60 to 80, and even if we use that 20 to cover childcare, the gap, that still puts us in a better spot because now he's got a normal schedule yep. and uh, he has a better quality of life. And that's something to consider in all of this, too. And Absolutely. You know, life has happened to Jonathan. And that's tough, man. When you've been knocked down like that, it's hard to get back up and believe in yourself and go, you know what? I am worth more than this. I am going to go hustle and find another gig. But a lot of even trucking jobs, I haven't seen a lot of bonuses these days. And so they're even jumping to a different company for a short period of time. You might get a bonus that helps you knock out some of this debt. I'm glad you brought that up. You know, maybe in the short term, he does get a trucking, another trucking job. He's working that crazy shift, but he's got, you know, his daughter is currently being taken care of by family. And so mm -hmm. what he does is, is I'm going to pay off all that debt. I want to fix that. Then that gives me some more freedom. So a lot of yeah. options there, Jonathan. Keep your head up. You can do this. I promise. Thank you so much for the call. George, great hour. Good Thanks times. again, buddy. You're so fall festive. It's, thank it's you. wonderful. You should go jump on a pile of leaves after the show. We'll hey, do I that. want to thank the team behind the glass for keeping us on the air. And you, America, this is The Ramsey Show. Hey, folks, Ken Coleman here. Did you know The Ramsey Show is one of the most popular podcasts in the world? Get your daily dose of advice on life and money. Check out all of our shows from The Ramsey Network wherever you listen to podcasts.